and I'ma get it, you know I be on the way What's up, everyone? Welcome to another exciting episode of Ride the Rebellion Podcast. I am Drew, and as you can see, he's here. I know we're not used to that. You're not used to having this. We've gone backwards in time. But this is the only Zero Drop Podcast, and because of that, we won't even drop an episode. It doesn't even matter if we're out of town, and I'm gone on vacation. Yep. Like This is being filmed in the past to bring it to you in the future. I'm your host, Drew Hall, and with me today is the king of the South Alabama Turndown. And the man who puts the debate in the Masters. <laughs> That's what I was trying Still to say. Still goes so smooth the second time. <laughs> it, was, it was great. I like it. Dale Boyd of Dale Boyd Sports Management Lighting. Dale Boyd of Bo- Dale Boyd Sports, <laughs> Sports Management. Um, hold on. Oh, of Lawn Care. Dale Boyd okay. of Dale Boyd Sports Management. I don't know the other T-shirts. one. T-shirts. T-shirts. Dale Boyd of Dale Boyd Sports Management Wagons. Dale Boyd of Dale Boyd Sports Management. Stickers. Stickers. What else do I do? Uh, housekeeping. We need a hype man. We do. You need a hype man that does the Dale Boyd of Dale Boyd Sports Man, but stickers. Can it Dale. be a little person? Because that would be very like contrasting to my size. It'd be perfect, like the little person and me. Mac and me. You don't know that movie. Oh reference. yes, I do. Oh. oh my god! If anybody knows that <laughs> reference, can somebody please? I will make this video downloadable if you will just. <laughs> Put Either Mac dub right me is Mac, or you just and put, put a windmill in my drink. <laughs> put a Zzz. little. I can't believe I'm going to tell my wife that you made that. She will be so excited. Oh, dude, that was one. Of my, that, that, that movie, movie went movie. hard back in the day. That movie is hard to paint. A hey, bug doesn't know that movie though. Nope, because he was not VHS. middle school sucking titties. He that was in cr- the womb. <laughs> that is correct. Hundred <laughs> percent. Sorry, we that's a, a little friend, early. We have a that's friend early. here watching, and she had mentioned that she was going to put it on her TikTok, which is epic. And I was like, I'm pretty sure we can't exist on TikTok uh, uncensored. Yeah, I went hard early. I usually we let that slide through. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Those are all just I'm sorry. I <laughs> <laughs> oh just. <laughs> that's one of the best backtrack you were you you know what that was that's the first time i've ever seen you become an athlete in the middle of a conversation where you suddenly just shut down you like normally you'll just keep going but that one you're like it just i can't even <laughs> it was handle. like the whole the dirt just kept falling on me like I wish I could say we've been drinking for a while, but this but is haven't. just a long day. Yeah. yeah, we're just getting back from shoot. So we're out of town. We're in Huntsville, Alabama, uh, which is world famous for the Monsanto agricultural trails that they have up here. Oh, I'm talking I feel trash like that is it. so bad. It is so bad. I'm talking trash. They're not. I don't know. We didn't get a chance to ride them. It is raining. And mm-hmm. as we always say, don't ride wet trails that aren't yours. <laughs> That's correct. Now that, that we're yes. now that we're uh, out of our county. People know us outside the county. Um, we have to put that. No, in legitimacy, I, I don't know yeah, those right. trails. I'm not going to go up there and no, no, trash no. your trails. So I we didn't have, have the a time to, to fix them. So yeah, that's correct. So we are hanging out in Huntsville for a job. That's why we're here. Speaking of jobs, let's do the one thing, the only thing that we're asked to do on the show, aside from exist, mm-hmm. which is plug our sponsors right in the face. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's really good if you if you're a Masters fan. This week is the Masters. Right, that is correct. You can take a little hop, skip, and a jump, or just run and try right on over to Aaron's shop, and you can watch the Masters and get some shoe fits. But we'll tell you, he does not have golf shoes. Does not have golf shoes, but he'll advise you on golf shoes if that's what you're into. And one secret tip that uh, we did get from Aaron regarding the Masters that um, all golfers should require a good amount of cardio for the amount of bullshit that you're. That's right. There's no cardio with golf. Hmm. Those guys are athletes, man. <laughs> are bowlers athletes? No. Have you seen Tin Cup? You didn't even have an arm. Use one arm. Tin Cup? That's a golf movie. Oh, sorry. What's the other one? <laughs> the Ernie McCracken movie? No, the one with the dude had one hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's Ernie McCracken. No, it's the a... other one. The Woody Harrelson movie. That's the, but that's the character's name. Oh. That's yeah. Bill Murray's character. Kingpin, King thank Pen. you. Thank you from the audience. Thank you from our audience. Kingpin. Ten Cup, Kingpin. They all <laughs> no, have, huge difference. One has Kevin Costner. Know, Kevin Costner is a good movie. And actually. as a whiskey, I'm a big golf fan, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen three golf movies. I like the. I like the greatest game ever played. Perfect. Bagger, Legend of Bagger Vance. Also perfect. You've never seen either one. I've never seen either one. No, you've seen Bagger Vance. I've seen Bagger Vance. I like Will Smith. Am I? Is my mic going crazy with me when I turn? 
I just check because I, no, I do that. Pretty, it's not bad. All right. so I think you're doing a pretty good job of keeping it that yeah, way. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying to Joe Rogan it. Deep throat it. Deep throat it down. Um, yes. So, of course, speaking of that, we have... <laughs> if you need... I, I don't even know how <laughs> to segue. I don't know either. I'm backpedaling out. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you are looking for a delicious cup of coffee and you know how to make coffee using a kettle... Ribbing our friend, and Justina's working in the office and laughed. Um, if you do like delicious coffee and you've not tried it yet, you should head over to LuckyShotCoffee.com. You should order yourself a bag of coffee. It is quite good. And the fact that Shannon puts as much care into that coffee, I promise you, you will taste a difference. It is not like some crazy diet garbage. It is legitimate, uh, a human being who gives a shit about the product that she puts out Mm -hmm. all the way down to the beans. She thinks about that stuff. She has single origin. All that kind of stuff is there. But it's not a marketing gimmick. This is a 100% real person making this coffee that's delicious. And I will tell you, I had a cup of Lucky Shot, and I'm going to shout her out. Uh, oh, no. What was the lady's name that made the um, pipe? Uh, dang it. Justina, what's the name of the lady that made the, the macaroons that were so good? No, Pipe, pipe Dreams. Oh, Pipe Dreams. So if you go check out Pipe Dreams, who's also locally based, she makes macaroons, and... I am telling you right now, I had a cup of Lucky Shot with a macaroon. Sadly, I can only tell you what color it was, so I'm not 100% sure what flavor, but it was amazing. And then I rode my bike. So I was jacked up on sugar and caffeine. I was like one of those little kids from uh, that movie, Talladega Nights. <laughs> All jacked <laughs> up on Mountain Dew yeah, and chip. That's me. Coming at you like that's a spider monkey. <laughs> that's how I felt. Um, so I actually told John this weekend that we talked to her, and she said she could like boil down some of the coffee and mm-hmm. make macaroons with it. Yep. And that John was intrigued, so I'm sure Shana would be intrigued. And I, I think, think it'd, it'd be, be fantastic. freaking awesome. So if you have a chance, head over to LuckyShotCoffee.com and try it out. Uh, as always, I we got a nice compliment from the last episode with Andy uh, Vidalia. <laughs> um, when Andy was on, we got some nice compliments, and one of those was uh, Nina and Toby sent us great compliments on their new business. They're excited to announce, and we get to drop this information right now. Ooh, live. Yeah, we're very excited. Ish. Dirt Coaster Academy is now officially a scooter company. <laughs> <laughs> Not you can ride razors <laughs> in the woods. As long as it has a dropper post. Yeah, as long as it has a dropper post. Oh, my God. Can you imagine on the front if someone built it? No. Uh, if you didn't hear oh. that episode, you should go back and listen to it. It's quite hilarious. Good. No, yeah, the Andy Vidella one? Yeah, Andy Vidella one. <laughs> so Dirt Coaster Academy, they're available for training. You should check them out. They allegedly may be coming in this area relatively soon, in the Mobile area. Sorry, not the Huntsville area. In the Mobile area relatively soon. But if you head over to date. Dirt Coaster. I, got, I have the date. Is it official there? It's I'm not oh. here for it. I'm in Los Angeles. Uh, 21st. Yep. Yep. May. April 21st. April 21st. Is it April or May? Oh, I don't know. I didn't see that Let me part. double check that. Let's double check those dates. But anyway, if you haven't had a chance, we've said it multiple times that uh, Dirt Coaster has made my riding better simply knowing the fact that like, I have confidence in my riding. And if you don't have confidence, then you know, you're in trouble. So it did help me in that process. It's May 21st. Oh, May 21st. Great. May 21st. If you would like to sweat your whatever parts you have off. Giblets. you can Giblets. Thank you. Giblets applies to everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you want to sweat your giblets off and learn to ride better... Shred Jump better. better. Shred better. I was going there. Oh, I didn't know. I don't know the order. I don't either. Okay. It's okay. But uh, head over to DirtCasterAcademy.com and check out their schedule. They will be near you somewhere or not. You can go yeah. meet them up in Bentonville, which I think is pretty rad. Yeah, I think the opportunity is there if you want to spend the 1000 that Andy um, suggested on scooters. classes. Yeah. Camp. Yeah. Spend $1,000 on scooter classes. <laughs> scooters. If you haven't had it, just go over to DirtCasterAcademy.com and... Yeah. Check them out. Um, I'm going to shout out Jefe Paletas, which is my favorite um, Mexican sweet shop in the entire world. They are not an official sponsor, but they sponsor my belly, and that therefore makes them part of the show. So if you haven't been over there, they're local. You're going to have to drive there. But if you are into delicious Mexican snacks and popsicles, go to Jefe Paletas. They're technically an e-bike because you they're your battery. Technically an e-bike brand. You're yeah. Right. Yeah. Weird Spelled way. Goot. <laughs> G-U-T <laughs> with an umlaut. Goot. Uh, goot Goot. All right, lastly, um, and to not be last, because he shouldn't be last, he should be your first stop if you're looking for a tattoo, because that Kevin Black good. is the freaking man. That's right. And Man of War Tattoo will take you to the top of the tattoo world. I don't know where that world is, but it's probably badass. Yeah. But he actually doesn't do any jellyfish designs. Oh, is that real? <laughs> 
have no idea. Because he does a lot of like ocean stuff. No, he, he, I'm sure he does whatever you want him to do. He's, oh, he's yeah. a he, brilliant uh, artist. Yeah, he did say he's not a watercolor fan. He doesn't do watercolor stuff. I'm sure he has things he doesn't do. Oh, okay, yeah. But I'm that's not, not gonna... for us to say. What no, do we right. know? Yeah, 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 yeah. I was just making a joke. Man, of, is man of War is a jellyfish yeah, yeah. that can oh, kill I got you. you. Got you. Well, Kevin probably does live by the twenty dollars. Is twenty dollars? I mean, for twenty bucks, I'll put whatever you want in my body. Uh, I think Kevin is discriminatory. Well, yeah, he's a great artist. He's That's not just going to have his art floating out there looking like legitimately. Trash. His art is so good. I don't remember who we were talking to. Somebody else. I, I came Scott. across. What was it? Scott. Is that who it Our was? New friend Scott. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They ended up like, oh, I know him, and, and they connected, and they had like a backstory, and had work done by him. And also, Scott has been around the bike community for a short time and already bought a second bike. I know. Welcome, Scott. Shout out to Scott. Scott, we like you, man. Scott, loose lips, sink ship, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> hey, just keep buying those bikes. We got to put stickers on them. Yeah, we're ready. Um, <laughs> all right. So this episode is more a collection of just random nonsense. Uh, you should be happy with that. Um, a couple of things have gone on that uh, we should probably chat about in general terms. One of those things was uh, I was not unable to make it because of this trip and other work projects. But Dale and a group of, of banditos, banditos, yeah, there you go, had uh, went up to the Silicaga area, and because it's not really on a, it's not an official trail. Yeah, it is. Well, oh, it part is. of it's the uh, Silla Ward trails at Lake Howard. Oh, I didn't realize that's what it was. Yeah. So they went up for the uh, ordinary epics big event that they do, um, and basically gave it the rundown on that side of things. So yeah. Well, um, in the past, I mean, we've but talked about... Don't get about, into your crazy stories yet. You got to save those. No, I won't. Yeah, okay. I'm leaving those for prompting. I'm just going to tell you for what. <laughs> um, in the past, we've talked about it a few times on this this uh, podcast, and we're going to beat it uh, into the ground a f- few more times. Um, because the event, I personally have gone the last three years. I raced two years, and then one year I didn't. That was this year. Um, but I believe in what they're doing. And We've always said from the beginning, like, we will talk about what we believe in on this podcast. And that's something that we truly, like, just being around the culture and the people and being a part of something that when you're there, you get to see something that's bigger than us. It's bigger than Jason that's the organizer or Wendy. Um, it's bigger than them. And it, it's, like, it's really crazy to see people do the things to their body that they do over that weekend. And, like, then all... Including con- you guys. Including us, yeah, in a different a different regard. But... And, and and then everybody's just like there. It doesn't matter if you fail. It doesn't matter if you you lined up and attempted it. And that's freaking amazing. Well, it goes back to the thing that we've talked about before, which is the right kind of racing. So there's yeah. different types, right? And, and in my opinion, there's a there's a good kind of racing, which mm-hmm. is you go, you compete, you go home. Uh, maybe a little bit of fraternization, but what you end up seeing mostly is like clicks. Yeah, right. And they and wear their metal around their neck. Right. Like, oh, I won. Like flexing yeah. on people down yeah, and, there. Like no one. Gives and then up. and then the complaints. Like, yeah. well, you know, if my bike had not been blah 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 blah, um, and whatever it may be, I got mud on my bike. <laughs> yeah, my uh, bike was so muddy I couldn't yeah. ride. Bro, we'll talk about that. For That's me. not the good racing. The good racing, or that is good racing, but great racing. Mm-hmm. Great racing is when the community actually sits down and has a conversation. So it's beyond that. So it ends up becoming more of a party. And there happens to be an event. And that event does have competition because I'm not saying no to competition. But the great part about that is the people can go compete. And when you come back, all that sheds away. All of it drops off. And then you're left with the core of what we're there for, which is riding bikes and having fun. Mm-hmm. And so once you have that back, once you gain that back, you have a whole different experience. And that is exactly what you guys kind of had. 100% the core of us being children on bicycles, right? Right, right, right. But an organized event that pushes us to be adults on bicycles. Mm-hmm. So we start out like the love of bikes is why we do it. And then you get on this race that's, either a 60 ish that equals almost 70 right. or a hundred ish that equals like 108 and over 108, you got to be an adult. Right. And at some point you like, somebody said, ask me this weekend. They're like, you're not racing this year, but what did it feel like when you did? And I was like, well, I cried real tears. I laughed. I was mad because I didn't train enough. Like I did all these different emotions and I wanted tacos and immediately thought I was pregnant. Right. Like, holy fuck. <laughs> right, right. All these emotions in one and tacos, like, right. I'm definitely pregnant. Right. Like, give me a pickle or something. Yeah, like, right, I'm cramping. Right. You know? So, it's like the most emotional thing you've ever gone through in one day. And you endure it with 300 other people. Right? Yeah. Um, this year had some adversity because the heat and it stormed right. Like, so he pushed start. Jason had to push start, which was a, a brilliant work idea. And it worked out well. Um, pushed the start times. But... 
I was literally in the porta potty, and it's just. The, <laughs> you tell the story. You like open the door, yeah. about ready to step out, and then it just blows. It up. It just blew up. Is it's there not, a, is there a social video not, of that, or do you not post? I didn't that? post it yet because I've we've been on the road. Like okay. I, haven't, I haven't gathered my thoughts completely. Right, yet, but, right. Um, yeah. So the the heavens just drowned it, and I made the joke when I got back to our little camp area. I was like, "Yeah, God said Skyway is too easy. I'm just going to add a little bit of paint." Like, yeah. But it's not true. Like Skyway is incredibly hard, even if it's dry. Right. And so. Um, we talked about that, you know, like that people just look at the mileage and they sign up for it thinking, dude, I ride 60 miles in a weekend. That's no big deal, dude. It's 7,000 feet of elevation in 68 miles. Right. So like it's straight up. There's in that 68, you got 22 miles of single track plus 80 degrees out. It's humid. People are dropping like flies. And I just, I don't, I, there's for us as from mobile, it's hard to prepare for like, uh, oh, yeah. we had friends that, that, accomplished big shout out to, shout to, out to, yeah yeah don uh murdered it wipeout king um john did a fantastic job and and actually we had an aid station and john was the happiest guy that came through not because we were friends but like he was thoroughly enjoying himself like, and that, well that's one of my points though is that though john went and, and john and i talk about this a lot when, when we have him on again um we should now that he's recovered much more from the wreck and stuff and the, the car stuff but when John comes back on, one of the things that he and I always talk about is we go to the races because it's a little challenge for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Like I, I have plenty of competition in my business. Like now that you're in that world, you see it. It's a mm -hmm. hard nosed business. So for me, the competition that I really enjoy uh, is challenging myself more. Uh, and right. so that's the things that take away. And John's in that same space. Like he finished strong. He wrote mm -hmm. it. He did it. Um, was he trying to compete with the guy that you guys ended up riding with later? <laughs> no, that was going to lose. That dude's a beast. Yeah. And, uh, but no, but his, his spin was a little bit different. And I think that's a takeaway is that's what I mean by great that's riding. That's what a great though. event though. But that's yeah. also being an adult, right? right? Like he's an adult to know like where he belongs right? and he's fine with it. And I'm yep. cool. And I love the fact that I'm not that guy. <laughs> like I don't understand where I belong. So like I push too hard, right? Like I'm the guy that goes, Oh, I'm, I can compete with Matt Stevens. <laughs> right. I have no freaking business even right. thinking that, right. Right. but I'm dumb enough to think that I can. Right. Like I wish I was as mature as John and could just be like, dude, I'm just going to enjoy this freaking bike ride and, yep. and just do it. Now, having been through the event before, what is it that the riders face? Like, what is the, like, obviously the climb is bad. There's a mental part, but what are some of the, and you talked about the emotions, but what is it the primary, like, what's the primary fuck you of the ride that they're dealing with where you're just like, Oh, I can't. Cause I know like Cassidy, for example. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and again, Cassidy f family member of the show, yeah, like she is part a, of the tribe, she is our sister, but Cassidy had, and she's a beast that, so, yeah. that chick can ride better than most people. I know. But especially I think on the that she side. unfortunately got punched in the face early. Like she was unprepared yeah. yeah. and no, and no detriment to her. Like, she just didn't understand how hard it was. Oh, she'll beast mode when she comes back. Oh next no, year. she's gonna destroy it. Like next revenge year. for her is yeah. fucking brutal. Yeah, I feel bad for Skyway next year. Uh, I mean, anybody. but I think that that's what it is. Like she got to mile twenty two where we were and was cramping already. Yeah, but fought that and went to mile. But you learned from mile the first time you rode because you cramped like a son yeah. of a bitch the first ride. But the second time you had way more fun because you knew how to yeah. to prep for it. Right. Yeah, you learn. You learn very quickly, and and there was. Uh, actually, Jason asked me Friday night, he was like, what's something that you wish that you would have known like your first time or like what you, what, what your experience was like, you know, like how would you have prepared better? I couldn't have prepared better cause I didn't understand it. I also didn't know that you what drinking water is a thing. And, and plus over those seven hours on a bike, you're burning 7,000 calories. I didn't know what a drop back was. So I didn't even do it. Everybody's right. up there eating full meals. I'm like, pussies, this is a bike ride, not a lunch but right. you need it right like right. you can't not so um i learned that and then i don't know there's a lot of things that you learn so i don't think doing it one year is sufficient you have to do it twice but it is a hard race to get into because i mean it's the like i've said this weekend a million times it's a family reunion like you go there you set up like dude you're hugging people that you only see once a year and people are coming up like do you remember me and it's like damn yeah i do i wondered how you got on my strava but right. like i right. yeah you know it's like and then you have that whole conversation. It's just like uh, seeing family again. And no one's there to say I'm better than you. And that's the super rare time that I've ever been around a 300 racer community. How much like of that said, do you think point. goes back to uh, Jason and them at Ordinary it's Epics? It's 100%. Yeah. Because Ordinary Epics is like ordinary people doing epic things. Right. Like, I don't know if that's his slogan. Maybe it is. It's I, about to be. Yeah. Well, yeah. So, um, but it is really, truly like he's been around the cycling community a lot in a lot of places and he realized that people, normal people can do this, but 
Skyway is a freaking monster race, and I, I don't think, I mean, Matt Stevens that won the hundred this year, yeah, um, has won it the last three years. Jeez, um, is a professional cyclist. Um, he gets paid to cycle. Like he is legit, a great human, and he only stopped for thirty seconds in a hundred miles, and that right. was to get his token to turn That's around. That's brutal. And so, but Jason has realized that that race is so hard that it brings people like him there because it's that hard, you know, right. like he it won draws the, attention. Yeah. He won the unbound 200 race. Like yeah. that dude is a legit cyclist. There's no reason I should be on the same course as him ever. And I get the chance to in that race. And it's, I think that is a, a testament to Jason laying out a great course. And I know Jason didn't invent it, but I know that he has taken it to another height and it's great. I, I can't say enough about it. What is the so? When, and, and the reason I'm getting to all these kind of ordinary epic yeah, questions, try, I'm is, leaving out like a I lot know, of I, I, on purpose, yeah, right? Because no, I'm teeing up something right, when right. we get there. But as as we look at it from a standpoint of um, these rides and these events, like Matt's a really nice guy, right? Mm, yeah. And you actually got to ride with Matt. So mm-hmm. so to tee up sort of your not to go into the other part. No, 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 that's a good part though. But that's a good segue in. Uh-huh. So Matt ended up riding with you and Bug, <laughs> right? And and. That was, that was not a <laughs> so, normal ride. It was so, so this is actually really funny. And I'll go ahead and throw myself under the bus on this one. But So Jason, Saturday night, was like, hey, uh, we're going to do an 8 o'clock hangover ride in the morning. And I was like, yeah, he's listening. He's pouring more whiskey. Um, so Jason said, I'm going to I'm gonna do an 8 o'clock hangover ride. I'm like, dude, I'm in. So I tell Bug, we get up, we get ready. No one shows up at the 8 o'clock group ride. So we roll up, and Jason's like, Oh, you can ride with him. I don't know Matt, right? Matt's getting his stuff. He's loading his stuff up. And Jason's like kind of laughing. I don't know if he did this on purpose. But Matt won the 100 the day before, but just wanted to ride. Didn't want to ride alone. So he sends him with Bug and I. Right. Well, Bug and I are just trying to have fun. We're going to go out five miles, turn around, and come back and ride a 10-mile ride. Well, we get out there, and I'm like, Matt, so you ride bikes often? He's like, yeah, I do. (laughs) You know, like it was. Do not let. Hold on, though. Do not let the 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 young lady sitting over there, or the one back there, deter you from telling. Deter. (laughs) Oh no, no, that's what I'm going to do. Don't deter you from telling. No, that's why I said I'm going to throw myself on the bus. Just make sure. So yeah, we we're on we're on the ride. Where you know his his wife is a professional cyclist as well. I she's a beast, by the way. Awesome, beast, badass. Yes. So. I'm learning all this on the ride and I'm like, we get five miles out and I have like a fanny pack. And I mean, we had been doing other things all weekend. So I was like, guys, I'm just going to go take a dump. Like I got to poop five miles in the woods. He's like, wait, wait, you brought toilet paper on a five mile ride. (laughs) And I was like, yeah, bro, for real. And he's like, do you know I have a podcast? Yeah. I'm like, he's like, all right, man, whatever. <laughs> like he didn't know. And I told him like, we get, I get back and bug didn't, it did bug didn't even flinch. You know, no, I mean, bugs all in. <laughs> yeah. So bugs waiting for the guy to be like, Hey, you fuck with weed. No bug. Actually, this is how tight I am with bug or no. Like I saved toilet paper for him. Cause when I got back, I was like, you got to poop dude. <laughs> like I didn't know, right, right. <laughs> you know? So I, I get back and I was like, you know, Jason's laughing. Like he knew who bug and I were like sending him right. off into the woods with us was a trick of it. <laughs> like, Hey bug, we're riding with the hundred mile guy. I just pooped at mile five. <laughs> I know we got to ride back. Yeah. The, the reason I bring some of that up is one of the things that's a real takeaway for, from that side of it is we were there as, as trail support. And you guys, I'm going to let you talk about the. Wait, po- let me hit one more topic. Yeah, yeah, one yeah. more before we go on. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Right before we take off, Matt was like, give me five minutes. I'm getting his stuff. And Bug goes, oh, this is the 100 mile winner. I'm just going to get dropped because Dale's going to want to try to keep up with him all fucking day. <laughs> and I was like, that's not going to happen, Bug. Two minutes into the ride, I was like, where's Bug? <laughs> I think we lost Bug. You dropped him. <laughs> we, you dropped we stopped. Bug. We stopped. No, no, no. I was leading at first, and I wasn't. We were going a good pace, like getting to know each other pace. And then we stopped once, and Bug Bug wasn't far behind, but he caught up. And Matt goes, "You mind if I lead?" I was like, "Sure." I wasn't letting that motherfucker go, but he also <laughs> rode 100 miles a day before and wasn't going that fast. So I was like, "You still dropped Bug." Yeah, but Bug was cool with it. <laughs> He knew um, it was happening. He knew it was going to happen. And it was, like I said, uncontrollable Dale, like not thinking. But I can hear him in his head, and he's just like, oh, Dale. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he's, just, he's like, that stupid, stupid. Oh, that bastard. stupid Dale. Yeah. You don't sound like that bug. It was good, though. Maybe Actually, at one point, I think Matt even gave me a compliment. He's like, dude, you're, that bike is heavy. I was like, I know. <laughs> yeah. But so is my ego, bro. Yeah, right. <laughs> this ego I carry. This bike is heavy. Uh, but the point of our yeah, journey up there, what you guys did, and the reason... Yeah, you can walk through the frame. Come on, Justina. Justina. She's married to a woman. 
that makes our podcast the most woke mountain it's bike an podcast. Inside, it's an inside. <laughs> go ahead, get your. We'll just Justina. wait. Mm-hmm. Go yeah, ahead. go ahead. Anything? Is your phone uh, over I'll there? Take another yeah. topo, please. Yeah, go ahead. We don't care. I don't care. I'm not picky. Thank you. These are not our wives. <laughs> yeah. These are our wives. These, These are, are our coworkers. Wives. These are our roommates. This is real world. I'm Puck. They're all married. Yeah, everyone here is married. Yeah, not to each other, though. No, not to each other. I mean, Dale and I are the most married. <laughs> that <laughs> oh is true. Oh, my God, that was the best. <laughs> that well was, done. That was good. By the way, guys, that is not a negative inside joke. It's a very positive inside joke. Absolutely. Yes. We love Justine. Now you're part of it. Justine's been on the show. So, one of the things that was the, the purpose of the setup of all that, by the way, that's staying in. I'm not cutting that out. Mm-hmm. Uh, by the way, uh, the, the, the setup, the reason we were up there, you guys were up there, and I wanted to be there really bad, but the whole reason we went up there is to set up an aid station, right? Mm-hmm. AIDS. And it's because... <laughs> that's a book. <laughs> <laughs> you know we have AIDS, bro. Mm. Um, if, you have not, if you've not seen some of the content that's come out, it is horrific. It is... Silent because we get canceled. <laughs> because it's been canceled. It's like silent film. <laughs> it is absolutely... That's why silent films existed. Charlie Chaplin was just going to get canceled more than anyone. But luckily, they didn't have a microphone back then. Mm. You don't know who Charlie Chaplin is? Mm-hmm. I do. Okay, I was just making sure. Yeah. Hey, he was on those orange VHS tapes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he definitely was. Uh, so anyway, so you guys set up that, that aid station, and the whole purpose of it was to... Um, literally be that like be there for it but we mm-hmm. want to make something a little bit different something a little more fun so in, for competitive people they could show up you guys were not pushing off anything crazy mm-hmm. but let's talk about what actually happened because there's a series of events you guys set up an aid station and what was who who all's involved at this aid station that shows up to support the riders of this epic sky week now you, we've set we've set, we've set the stage well you understand what the ride is now mm-hmm. so now i want you to imagine this group of um Degenerates. That's the nicest thing you could say. Yeah. Um. So, the aid station was planned. Jason wanted me to race. I said no. Let's just have an aid station. Um. And Bull Gap is where we were. It's 22 miles from the start of the race. And I gathered some people that I thought would be cool in the woods. In the Star Wars terms, this was the Moss Eisley. Gabe will understand this joke. It's the Moss Eisley of uh, of aid stations. Go ahead. I have no idea what you it's just It's okay. Said. I don't expect you to. All right. So I, I got a hold of Chase, a uh, past guest, listener, longtime listener, first time caller, um, huge fan of ours. King of the yam bags. Um, he actually loves us more than our mothers. That's, that's absolute fact. Um, Chase is nearly cult level. He's almost a cult. Chase is almost a cult. Yeah, like his own cult. Yeah, he's a cult. Yeah, <laughs> go ahead. He might be in it by himself. <laughs> <laughs> He probably is. All right, so Chase and so Chase kept saying, "Dude, we need grilled cheese. We need grilled cheese. We need grilled cheese." And I constantly was like, "I don't know why we need grilled cheese, but okay." So he brought the flat top grill and grilled cheese. I brought t-shirts for everybody to wear. Yep. And then we got Eric Hagen because Eric is a super fan of everyone. He is a fan of humans. And yeah. I love him for Eric that. Eric Hagen, shout out to him. It is a beautiful thing you do, Eric. And so Eric showed up, brought his van, gave us internet access, which was awesome—a speaker, a megaphone. Um, the bull gap has some master P echoes stuck into it. Right. That's awesome. So, um, essentially we just set up a party and Eric had said it best and I've stolen it for a few, uh, posts on social media, but we had a party and a race drove through it. Right. That's essentially what happened. Right. And we're not near civilization. Like we're in the mountains at this point ish and like where people are coming through and the drive trains are destroyed. Um, we're cyclists. So we understand so we cleaned their drivetrains off. We offered them help. Uh, like John said, we turned him around. We bought, we put both of his, filled both of his bottles, his food, and cleaned his drivetrain off and had a three-minute turnaround. Right. So, so it's like NASCAR style. Yeah. We're like freaking But you guys are m- maybe mildly inebriated. So we were trashed. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, to be completely honest, right. uh, we, I had DOS boot. Right. Uh, which is a glass baby boot that I made. And I only drank my beers out of that. Jesus. And I told Bug when we were going up there, I was like, I'm, and by only drink them, like one drink, like chug it. Right. There's, that was it. Right. Um, but it, there's a time lapse video and you can actually see where we started falling off. <laughs> like people are sitting down more. Right. Uh, but to be completely honest, we were as exhausted doing that. Like 
I got 10,000 steps just standing, like helping. Right. You know, like. Because you guys were putting in the effort. And that's yeah. the thing is like. We so, all had jobs. Right. It was uh, drive trains getting wiped off, yeah. uh, water bottles refilled, mm-hmm. grilled cheeses made, stuffed grilled in cheese. mouths, uh, beers chugged, right? You had some riders yeah, stopping. Yeah, we had some people dro- chugging beers, which right. was freaking great. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, If you have the moxie to do that, like, that's awesome. Yeah, but it's good calories, though. But we saw some things that were badass. Like, um, I really wish I would have got his name, but a gentleman with one leg. Yeah. Like, amputee from the like knee down. He clipped in, like... Yeah, yeah, he had a he had one of the ones that was like the, the blade, blade yeah. on the bottom, and on the bottom of the blade there was a clip. Yeah, but just like the inspiration you draw from a guy like that that is doing something like this, while a bunch of people are set on their fat asses just giving away grilled cheeses, is fucking amazing. Right. Like, I wanted to tell him that, but he ac- he actually started cramping and had to bail at our station, and yeah. he was so mad. Yeah. He was like, "I'm not a quitter. This sucks." And I'm like, "Dude." I don't, it's not a good time to say people like you don't even try this because that's a terrible thing to say. Anyways. Yeah, right, but right. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you don't want to like over patronize. But he him. also seems like the, if, if the guy's pushing that hard, oh, he's dude, the kind he's of person that's like, badass. like basically F you, I'm going to keep going. What right. I'm doing. Yeah. yeah. And that I wanted to tell him how much of an inspiration he should feel like, but he wasn't in that yeah. frame of mind. Maybe never, but that was awesome. And then, you know, like, what about Scott? Wasn't Scott there? From Fox? Yes. Oh, yeah. So I was going to do that a little later. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Anyway. Keep your your story going. Um, So I met another great guy, Scott Vickery from Fox Factory, um, hooked us up with some hats. um, The Dale's wearing. I didn't get a hat because I didn't go. Yeah. That's part of the rules. But He got two of them. He's just sitting on it. No, I I only have one. Ish. No, I only have one. (laughs) But anyway, I met Scott, and I'm really happy to meet Scott. Um, He is uh, another factor in the tail stuff up at oak mountain right and it's he understands he gets it you know like he sees the community he wants to be a part of he is part of the community and that to me is when you see somebody from a manufacturer there doing things with the people that are consuming the product is it'd be like somebody from topo chico coming over here and hanging out with me while i'm pounding topo chicos i think what's interesting though is the fact that he's there he's hanging out Mm -hmm. he's part of the community but he's supporting the community And he's a badass dude right he was taking people that he was like a sag vehicle the people that broke down and we ran out of bread we made four loaves of bread grilled cheeses uh koneka sausage a few pounds bacon um so we've already made a a secret group that we're going to try to um get we're going to up the ante again yeah it's going to be if you race skyway this year you better bring your floaties because they're going to be a swimming pool up there next year. It's going to be off the hook. So and we're uh, going to have VIP passes. We're going to have to. That's going to be the game. Yeah, that's the game. It's going to get too so, big. So the point of all that though is that we went up there to support the race because we believe in it and mm-hmm. we wanted to have fun. And the the upside of that is what we walk away with is one of those moments where you literally walk away having had a great time exhausted i know you're i know you're gassed you were talking about this morning you're like dude i just haven't slept Mm -hmm. i haven't been home because you like finished that that whole scenario came home for a day got in a car drove right back up to huntsville so it but it's the point of doing all that stuff is to support the community and see it grow but then at the same time you're providing this this really valuable asset to those riders and now those riders are like benefiting from it right Mm -hmm. and yet you're having a blast the entire time. The whole time we were drunk. So <laughs> Friday say, night. I love how you just went straight for it. We, I mean, we were a Friday night. We got done riding. We rode 20 miles Friday. And I was like, you guys are done riding? Like, I'm really not done. So Jason actually posted a picture on his page, his social media, of me pouring a PBR into my water bottle and going out on my bike. Jesus. Like, I was just in that mode. Like, I was right. in that full-blown, I'm a degenerate frat boy right now and right. i'm just gonna keep going right and it went hard enough to actually now try to plan anybody who volunteers for the race on friday nights will have a little enduro race yeah a little tiny enduro race and then uh i don't think it's super can we talk about down the road about the about the turnaround situation no okay that's a unofficial um, I, just didn't know if it could be, I didn't know if it could be unofficially part of the uh no, because the then you'll have some people that have no business doing it. Fair enough. That's the that's the problem. And actually, I'll talk about that because I talked to Jason about it a little yeah. bit. So, like, we thought about, hey, let's have another. I, maybe maybe I thought about it. Jason might have listened. He might not have. But um, let's have a you turnaround. Just gave me a sweatshirt. Yeah. 
the turnaround at 40. He's like, here you go, Dale. Here's a sweatshirt. Maybe go I, away. Maybe I thought about this in my head and was going to tell him, and then I didn't, and I don't know if I did. I, I talk a lot. So when I was there, Jason and I talked a lot. We drank a lot. I don't right. know what we did or didn't talk about. But like, I think what happens is if you offer a 40-mile part of this race, which would turn around at Bull Gap and come back, um, I think you'll have a lot of people that have no business at all being out there. And it's dangerous for the volunteers. It's dangerous for the people. Right. And it just wouldn't be worth it. Right. You know, like there's people that go out for this race and they know that they don't want to do 60. They'll turn around at 40. And that's fine. But they know that they can do that. Right. But like 40 miles, dudes have no business whatsoever. Like, oh, I'm going to push to 40 miles. This is not a race to try to do that. Right. Or to like learn that you so can't So my do problem it. would be is I would want to ride 60 miles. You, know, you have to ride 68. No, but what I'm saying, no, but what I'm saying is, is what I would want to do is ride up to to do the 40 mile turnaround. Oh yeah. Come hang out, ride back, and then I'd I'd want to ride another 20 miles back up to hang Ooh. out. Yeah. Right. So it's not. I, I get your point. I'm just saying. What I thought was fascinating is that that now there's this nice little cultural event that occurs. Mm-hmm. Right. That you guys built this great little moment. And I think the bigger difference is something you brought up that I thought was really relevant is we're mountain bikers. Not everybody falls into our category. We're mm-hmm. out there. We're kind of like those. We're not like frat boys, but we're the, we're the guys that are there to have fun. This is mm-hmm. what we do because we work in very competitive industries. And for us, the release is having that good time, seeing others have a good time. Like right. I've been, we build trails for the sole purpose of seeing other people go. Scott is part of a company that builds uh, you know, suspension for people to go have fun. Right. He is essentially a support mechanism, mm-hmm. right? And that's what's great about having Andy on or anybody from Fox and having that conversation. But we're up there to do that. So it's a support system. Right. You're there to, to provide. However, the joy of that at the same time is there's other groups that come along that aren't part of that. Mm-hmm. And that's cool too. And they get to go do their own thing. But we benefit so much from being part of that culture that it lets us just kind of be and do our own thing and be part of it. But we're all mountain bikers. Right. So at the end of the day, the one thing that's a big takeaway is roadies have their style, mm-hmm. right? Uh, gravel has their style, but mountain bikers have always been known to have their own style. Well, that station has its own style. That's it exists right. for a reason. We set precedent. And to your point, it's not just volunteers. Now you have people that literally know what you're going through, mm-hmm. right? That have been there. Some of them have been there. Some of them at least have ridden enough to understand the challenges. So now you have a support system that's leaning in to help you finish that race best as possible, mm-hmm. right? And should you decide to like do something fun, fine, do something fun. Right. And that's what, it was helpful because I was the only one at the aid station that had Dang, done the, the race. I it. never hit the mic. I know. My hand this itched. is a different area. Um. So, but I was the only one at the aid station that had finished the race. And so they were all, anytime somebody had a question about what to expect coming up or, or, you know, how's it feel doing this? They turned to me and I was like, I mean, I'm just a degenerate drunk, but I'll give you some advice. Yeah. I mean, it worked. It all worked. Yeah. So what was like, uh, what's like, what's the only, I know that some of the moments can't be talked about cause it was mm-hmm. just too rowdy. Yeah. It got rowdy. <laughs> it got rowdy. What, what's like your mo- what's one of your key moments takeaways from the entire weekend of just obviously the 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 turd ride with the with, turd with the professional cyclists was fantastic. pretty freaking awesome um you know like uh, we connected with some dudes that we don't always hang out with you know like in that no here's actually to be completely honest not even just the dudes like that's not that's not weird but um being in an environment where everybody's completely in tune with the conversation because phones didn't work. Our right. cell phones didn't work. Right. So every time you're sitting around in a circle, bullshit, and like everybody's in the conversation. So there's like so many things that happen that are hilarious that you can't replicate. Right. That only happen there and you will never be able to explain it. And so like that to me is like an old school, like damn, like takes me back. Yeah. And you know, like the other thing is like Billy Bean is the land manager there of the park. He's the, the manager has the house there and he is the best has his hot people go because of Billy. Like I tried to tell him that on a Facebook post, like he was thanking everybody for coming. It's like, no dude, half the people come just to see you. Right. You know? And he's probably like, I live here. You guys can come whenever you want, <laughs> you know, but it's like, that's part of the allure. Like Billy is part of the race, you know, like it's, it's that whole, I don't know. It's like a weird hippie culture of, um, everyone just there free, free love and everybody, you know, like, Oh my God, you didn't make it, but I love you for trying, you know, right. like it's just a weird, weird world. I don't know. 
it's hard to explain. That's why I say you have to experience it, whether you race or whether you come hang out with our degenerate folks. Can you imagine, though, that, let, like, and, and Jason may not want this, so, uh, Jason, you have all the power to say no to it, but can you imagine that if every aid station ends up turning into a different, like, magical moment? Or, like, they I have would, theme parties that's what that I'm everyone talking about. The, Like, oh, if you have dude. the bull gap bullshitters, yeah. right, or whatever it is, it's almost like Mardi Gras. Each one becomes, like, a little society with floats. And they right? have to get a different trinket from everyone. Oh, come on, man. At the end of that... Dude, that'd be so good. How good is that race for somebody that wants to go out there and have a good time, right? So, the point I bring that yeah, up is... Yeah, the scavenger that, hunt for the, that's, the people that's, that aren't but, racing. That's literally, now we're talking about the culture of making something so unique mm-hmm. that is open to anyone, that's open to everyone to come out there and try. Now, you have to have some experience in getting in that right. space. It's I, not, that's, he it's still, not, I think it still has to stay somewhat grassrooty because yeah. it is a grassroots yeah, yeah, race. Yeah. Like it's a, unsupported besides us. So like I do like that idea is great. No, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, but it's capped at something like 250 people total. Well, that's what I mean though. Is like yeah. the, the riders that are there for it, but the aid stations is a different oh, story, yeah, right? So stations. suddenly, if you have this thing where the aid stations become like this magical thing, those riders are going to gain so much momentum. Mm-hmm. You might see a real level of competition start to exist that didn't exist before that. Mm-hmm. I think that's fascinating. Oh, like dude, once you start it. pushing the boundaries of that, it, it gets really crazy. I love it. I think that's a brilliant idea. Yeah. And even if not, we'll just go up there and hang out for people. That are just if not, yeah. I mean, I think what we'll do is uh, maybe per his permission, like next year, I think one of the things that we'll work on is setting it up where it's like a, a VIP raffle. You get to come hang out on that That'd space. Be sweet. Because we do have to protect it a little bit just for verification reasons. But if we get to that point and we can have it set up where you can come hang, mm-hmm. then you come up there and hang out with us, be part of the game. You got to work. Yeah. No, you got <laughs> to work. You're it's going not, to work. It's not easy. If I catch you sitting down, right. I'm going right. to make you chug. Oh, oh hey. That's Look, at that. Look at that. Um, so, Look at that. Um, anyway, if you... Uh... Oh. Okay. Okay. So our friend over here, <laughs> sorry, who has an amazing social media account on on TikTok, who streams stuff, uh, she was nice enough to include us in her podcast. Hello. On, hey, what's up, people? What's Party up, people? We are recording a podcast. If if you're into biking or just uh, two dudes being mildly inebriated, then this that's is fine a, too. Actually, it's just a podcast about people that like to ride bikes in the cycle of life. <laughs> Ish. Shout out. Ish. And we're all married to women. Right. Fair enough. Minus one. So we, it's, she keeps giving, she's like a producer giving us numbers now all of a sudden and it's like throwing off our game of like, oh wait, no, we're supposed to nah. do things, but we have to be. Uh, so yes. So on the pod, you're hearing this and saying like, what the hell are these guys talking about? But in reality, what's happening is there's a group of individuals who are getting to hang out with us and have a live stream side of things. And so that's what's occurring yeah. right now. When you go back to, so I'm going to stay in, in place on that. If you haven't checked you have it to out. tell them on the live stream. Oh, right? yeah. So it's Ride the Rebellion podcast. You can find us on all the social media. Also, if you're listening on our Except podcast. Except for TikTok, unfortunately. Yeah, we're, we're going to change that, though. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll hire someone to do that for us. <laughs> um, because we're not so good at those things. However, uh, if you. Yeah. Tic Tacs. Shout out for it. Shout out Joe Rogan. <laughs> that says jam. Um when you guys were up there, like on that space, one of the things that you mentioned to me that I thought was pretty funny was, so you have these people riding up this mountain and they're mm-hmm. climbing up and they're doing the whole thing and they get there. And then some of them, did you guys, do you mind sharing the story about the fact that you bribed them to quit? Yeah, we actually, well, we, when they would, they would come to us, I literally, um, I was in charge of letting the race know who, who bailed out because um, it's a safety thing. You have to know who's on the course and who's not. So... They would come up to us and they'd be like, I'm quitting. And for five minutes, we would give them the, no, you're not. Sit down, eat some mustard, like here's wait, some pickles. Wait, wait, but backtrack on the mustard. What do you mean by eat some mustard? Why are they eating mustard? Also, mustard has high sodium levels and uh, it takes away cramps. Got it. Um, so I think but they so. were doing mustard shots. That's also there. me being an idiot. They were doing mustard shots. Yeah, so Bug Bug was our mustard man. The uh, he People would have to get on their knees and he would squirt mustard in their mouth. I have plenty of pictures of it. That makes it even better. And we only had a jar of pickles, not like multiple jars of pickles or cups to put pickle juice in. So people are just literally Boone's farming the pickle jar and passing it around. Did you say Boone's farming? Yeah, that's what a great ad- reference. That's an that's a, yeah, I'm yeah. with you. Um, that'd so, be it. That'd be, uh, maybe a verb. Yeah, go ahead. 
I don't. We're not English majors. We're not English. So majors. TikToks bail uh, us out. They're passing this around, and then I had DOS boot, and I would just like slowly while they're quitting, like pour a beer for them in front of them. Yeah, like hey, right. if you quit, you can get a beer. And so we talk some people into quitting. Maybe they were going to quit anyway. If right. you stop and it, you're going to quit, but we did try to talk them out. Like we wouldn't let them just say I'm quitting and like, no, 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 you're not like, just give it some time. The point of those still is goes back to the same thing. It's, it's about rider support. So at the mm-hmm. end of the day, it's that there's a, so I'm a big and Anthony beer. and beer and beer <laughs> right. mm-hmm. and beer support. I'm a big Anthony Bourdain fan. So Anthony, a long time ago, uh, talked a lot about he, in his book, Kit, kitchen confidential, which you, if you've never listened to and you like Anthony Bourdain or you don't know who he is, just buy his audio book and listen to it. One of the things he talks about is owning a restaurant. The biggest thing about owning a restaurant is um, knowing that everything's going to go wrong. Right. And by everything going wrong, you turn around and, and if you still want to do it, then you really, your heart's for it. Mm-hmm. So if the Bull Gap aid station is the, is the, is the point of no return to some, right. right? It's the idea that when you get up there and you have that moment, if you're going to push through, like, hey, d- don't give up. You can keep doing it. D- keep pushing hard. But if you're not going to give up and that's the situation, that's one of those turning moments where things change dramatically and flip in the other direction. That's where things start to go radical very quickly because now all of a sudden somebody's super motivated to push beyond the boundaries of what they wanted to do. That's right. Right? And when so you it, see that happen, it's amazing. Like Cassidy. Right. Cassidy was done. Right. She was cramping. The guy that rode up with her was like giving her all of his goos. He quit. Like he bailed. No shit. He bailed and quit. But she kept going. And she kept going. Like he gave her all of his nutrition and said go. And she went by herself. Oh, man. And that kept gets going. me in the guts. Yeah, dude. And oh, she comes that gets back. gets me in the guts, bro. And when she comes back, she's super happy. Right. And I was like, oh, my God. Right. And then, you know, she hit the fan. Right. She, yeah. Unfortunately for Cassidy, she hit... A challenge where she went off so far off course that she wasn't able to get back and then yeah. just kind of demoralized her, her. Right. Yeah. And there's no shame. Like, she went 59 miles, I think. Like, right, right. 59 miles is amazing. And she didn't quit because she quit. She quit because it was getting dark and she was off course. And she called me. I went and picked her up. And Oh, man, it's a bust. Yeah, but it's still like... The I, she was upset, of course. Naturally, you would be. I would have been. Yeah, yeah. And so I had to like lighten the mood a little bit, you know. The thing about Cassidy, uh, if you guys don't know about her, I'm going to bring up this part. The thing that's rad about her is she's a beast. She's new to cycling. They're very new. Um, very very. New. Not even maybe a year. Oh uh, yeah, maybe a year. Maybe a year. She's raced in Pisca. She's raced a lot. She signs up for races. She it's races wild. everywhere she possibly can. And the thing that stands out the most to me, and, and she won't appreciate this because, uh, I mean, she'll appreciate it, but she's going to like play the whole humble thing. Is mm-hmm. that She's also a police officer. So not only does she serve our community, and she's a badass, and she's tough as shit, and she's rad, she, she literally is a cyclist on top of it, but a mountain biker, and she puts in all the work to make sure that she's giving everything she has. So now you have this individual that's out there that's just crushing it, giving everything. So when we say that she... she got off course and struggled like the heartbreak that we feel for her. Like Dale tells me the story and I'm like, Oh no, but it's, but it's to also say that her revenge is going to be some other kind of tactical bullshit. And it's weird. Like Cassie's never asked for our uh, admiration. She's never asked for me to do anything. And I don't know why I'm drawn to like appreciate everything she does because she's freaking sick at it I like know. she and, and she aggressively like, goes after it she's the nicest person ever we too. don't know if we're still on tiktok we might be on tiktok we we might be if we're we, still on tiktok we don't know how to cause Shh. we can't Shh. <laughs> and it, but i i told cassidy multiple times how proud i was and i, I there's no i was not lying are we on the tic tacs oh hey tic tacky we don't know we have a hundred followers we don't know what this is like You know what? If we're being brutally honest about it, it's not a matter of that. It's more a matter of like it's technology. And and we're not. Here's what I do know. I know that the community on TikTok is badass. They're supportive. They're positive and they help people. And I think that's fantastic. What I've seen from uh, both her account and then like my boy Ed Dudes, those that group of people that pushes this positivity and and growth is badass. And I'm all for that. I think what's going to happen, and is, that's what's happened in our community. That's what I'm saying is like, essentially, the bull gate, bull, bulls balls. Yeah, the bulls balls. The bulls balls. 
the BS Gap Station yes. was, uh, at the end of the day, you guys were like that little thing. You were a shining beacon. You were a moment. You were fun. You don't, the one thing that's interesting to me about those kind of support mechanisms is you have no idea what you were in the moment to somebody. Mm -hmm. You may have helped them get through. You may not have. But at the end of the day, like some, some people walked away. But you guys literally oh, were there. The to best be part was yeah. when we were riding with Matt Stevens on Friday or on Sunday, he was like, where were you guys at? And we were like, Bull Gap. He's like, where's that? And I was like, oh, you he didn't just even. Blazed he blew right through. by it both ways. I was like, you didn't hear the music? He's like, what music? I was like, oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> like, you were going so fast, you never even saw us. So we did have some Ride the Red members uh, uh, that were up there. You had Gabe. Gabe was up there. Yeah, Paul. Yep, Paul came up and camped. Yep. And Bugalicious. And Bugalicious. And bug then I bailed on you last minute because I'm a it's douche. All it's all good. I didn't have a choice. Um, Bugalicious definitions. Dude, when I got when you guys called me on Sunday, one of my favorite things is you guys called me on Sunday. And I knew I was gonna get a call. Oh, yeah, it was gonna be I knew I was gonna get a call that was like, bro, <laughs> listen to this. <laughs> but like, that's not what I got. What I got was like, hey. <laughs> I was like, what's up? And it's you, it's you and Bug. You're like, man, we just finally ate our first meal. I was like, For real? what? It was yeah. like, yeah, we just ate our first meal. When I tell you that we've been like literally just working the entire time, it's like uh, we rode 20 miles. And they're like, of course, like any mountain biker, you go into the like, yeah. what's the bike situation? Right. And you tell all that stuff. But it was literally like the first thing out of your mouth was like, we just ate our first real meal. <laughs> yeah, we didn't eat all weekend, hardly. Like right. they have a potluck Friday night. We ate Saturday. We ate whatever the aid station had. Right. <laughs> like we just were eating. The food Grilled cheese and Skittles. Oh, did you bring some uh, Uncrustables? So, yeah, I did. I brought How Uncrustables. How many did you eat versus like the I didn't eat any, but the people pounded those things. Because they're super carbs. Yeah. They're super calories. It was actually funny because uh, at one point we were running out of everything. And uh, huge shout out to Scott. He made a grocery store run and just brought Down back. Down the mountain and back. Yeah, he brought back the farm. Like he brought back everything Good we needed. Good grief. But <laughs> we didn't run out of beer, A. Because that was not going to happen. Correct. Um, and so we started. Eric ha is, has a sprinter van there. He's pulling out food out of his cupboards. I'm in my car. Like, I have my whole food that I brought. Like, we're just dumping it out on the table. And the funny thing was, we'd never brought bananas, right? There was banana on the table. Somebody <laughs> traded us a grilled cheese for a banana. <laughs> that is fantastic. <laughs> and I, right? I said, oh, my God, somebody put a banana. Where'd that banana come from? Two seconds later, this dude, dude, banana, hell yeah, like grabs it and just rips it open, starts eating it, and goes. Perfect. Like, it was so perfect. So weird. Like, the everything that happened was just weird. So I think we should do something fun. Uh, that doesn't affect anything on on his stamp on for Jason. It like keeps everything safe. Oh, I if actually you, I tried to t I tried to check with him with everything I was doing to make sure like I didn't want to overstep anything. Yeah, of course, of course. Like what the, I'm saying though is like if you would like to help sponsor it next mm. year, we will gladly put up banners. Absolutely, we'll we put will your name gladly on it. make sure you're mentioned on the podcast. So there's an advertising thing. There's no money involved. Right. I don't want a money thing. I want you to bring bread. us actual Loaf goods. Of bread. We need bread. We need bananas. Cheese. We need cheese. We need not now, not now, no, not now, now. not yeah. April twenty twenty. When we come back around, though, I think if you do that and mm -hmm. everybody supplies that, we will make sure you get covered. I almost can guarantee that if we talk to Scott and we work some deal, maybe, maybe. we can work out some cool merch gimmick on the other side. That said, if you guys will show up and actually put in the effort, we'll make it happen. Absolutely. Additionally, we do have some cool stuff that Andy gave. And we next do. episode, we were going to raffle some of that stuff off. Yeah. So we have a couple of things. One, we have the large, badass foxtail stickers, which are sick. Pretty sick. And limited to them. We have a couple of hats, mm -hmm. right? Those may or may not be auctioned. We haven't dis discussed that yet. So just being raw about it, they might uh, end up in the old wardrobe closet. Um, but hat, we're going to have some stuff. Fox hat, <laughs> yeah, you got that fancy one. <laughs> the patch. I know. It's a pretty rad hat. It is a sweet hat. Anyway, so we'll have some stuff to give away on that side of things. Is is there anything else we needed to uh, talk on? Because one of the things we want to do is have Jason on. Yeah, we're going to have Jason and Wendy on. Wendy, um, thank you. Yeah, uh, they own Ordinary Epics. Because Jason doesn't just do Skyway. He does um, the Mississippi Gravel Cup, which is a, a series of four gravel races, which I think would be cool to bring a mountain bike community over one of his gravel races. Dude, let's aid station the shit out of stuff. Dude, it would be fun Can you shit. imagine if suddenly like that's a whole The gimmick. gravel cup guys are way more serious than mountain bikers, yeah. but we could probably have some fun. Um, 
I don't know. There's a lot of party pace guys out well, there. Well, like, and we we say we weren't serious, but we were serious. Like when the racers yeah. were coming through, we weren't fucking off. Like right. we were taking care of them the way they needed to be taken care of. Right, right, right. Um, so that is a key to it. Like you can have fun and be serious too. Right. Um, because I wouldn't have wanted some jackass with a beer getting in my way during a race when I'm dying. Didn't you have? And maybe you don't want to talk about. It, did Did you have someone who was like, "Don't touch my chain"? Yes. Some dude. I had Bummer. a. I had a. A wet towel and that's it. And the by the time they get to us, their drivetrains are trashed. Like right. it looks like somebody had been spooging mud on it for the last twenty five miles because that's what was going on. Um, so just a, t- a towel with a water on it because I know I don't want stuff p- people putting on mine either. And he was like, "That better not have lubrication on it because my chain's wax." And like I casually just like looked at him like, "Bro, there's no wax on this chain, but whatever, fine. You're not getting shit." Right. Like, don't be a dick. Right. Um, and then other people were like super happy that we had chain lube and we had a work stand and, you know, like we been a derailleur back for a guy and like we could do small stuff and fix it for them and they could just get their water filled and they don't have to worry about it. Right. So it's kind of nice to have that, that little bit of knowledge up there. Um, I don't know. It's, it's refreshing. Just, and when you're in the middle of the mountains and you think there's no hope and then there's a group of yahoos with vanilla ice playing or master P or whatever. And we blared the speaker like towards whatever way they were coming. Yeah. So, it, and we had Eric on a megaphone, like yelling at people and that's awesome. Not yelling derogatory things, but just like, come on, come on, come on. Right. Man. Right. And that to me is it's to see like the group is, just, I don't know. It's emotional. I think for me, like the, 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 the fact that like uh, you had, people uh from the mountain bike community like giving back in that space and mm-hmm. having a good time and being like hey not only do we hear we're like 100 percent support but we brought the party with us like right. that but we're here for us too right but yeah. that's the thing that needs to exist like it needs to be more of that so that's why i was saying about that side of things like i'd love to see more growth in that category like i think it'd be a lot of fun and you guys got your rides in and yeah, you had a go. good time yeah, absolutely so if you're uh, in it for just the pure exercise side then you can pre-burn what you need to pre-burn and then just come well, hang out. Another funny thing that happened is the aid station we worked at is advertised and on the map for the race as only water. Right. Like, so it's a water fill station. That's it. And we just, like, they had a whole meal. <laughs> like it's you fantastic. could sit there and eat whatever you want, you know? So, but it was really, really funny to see the people that were rolling up to us at mile 22 with no nutrition. Right. Like, what are you prepared for? Right. Like what, wait, you're doing the 100-mile race and you have no goose and you're going to take all of ours? Like, the fuck? Yeah. Like, that happened. Yeah. So it's like, I don't get it. Uh, so here's another, from a, from a volunteer standpoint, prepare for what you're about to do. Right. Like, you're going to war with five bullets. Right. Like, you're going to be in war for seven hours with five bullets? Get a, yeah, prepare. Yeah. Um, yeah. We're there to help aid you. We're not there to be your mommy and daddy. And that but never it sure happened. would be Everybody. rad if we had enough sponsors to turn that around where it's like you have like almost like quote goodie bags yeah. that have goose and shit. Like, come on, Aaron. I'm just going to freeze my Actually, we bought a bunch of moon piles. Uh, shout out Paul. He bought a five moon boxes pies of moon pies. Moon pies is a pies. great idea. Yeah. So he bought five boxes of moon pies and no one was taking them, right? And I was like, I'm about to Mardi Gras these motherfuckers and just start throwing them at them when they come by. It's a great idea, though. Yeah. No, it's people would eat them. super dense calories. Like, them, that's a great um, idea. After we ran out of everything else. <laughs> yeah, of course. Some people are scared of moon pies. You got to make sure they're fresh. They melted, too, in the sun. Oh, we'll get some, uh, we'll get uh, Chattanooga to send some down. Yeah. That's where they're from. Moon pies out of Chattanooga. Well, they were they were good. Anyway, we'll make it happen. We had some fun. Uh, we definitely had fun, and I can't wait to do it again. Like right, Bug and I both almost simultaneously text each other Monday. Like, dude, that weekend was so fun. Yeah. Like, I just wish to be back there in that environment. I, I wish I could do it a good lot, but then I also don't because then it waters down that. Right. You know, like you There's want. Sometimes it to be, you want it to be magical. Yeah, and it yeah, was yeah. magical. And this year, like. Obviously, I've raced in the past. It was not that I didn't feel that same magic. I mean, I did. I did. I wouldn't have had as much fun had I not raced it before. Yep. Because I knew what they were enduring. Yep. Um. So with that, is there anything coming up? I know we always forget that. I know what you're. I don't doing. know. The only thing I have on my calendar is is the yeah he's dirt coaster thing. Uh, Drew's traveling. He's going to leave yeah. me alone for a while. Yeah, I'm gone for a good bit. I'm going to vacay. I'm supposed to go ride in, uh, I'm going to be in Gatlinburg and there's a bike park in, I don't remember. I'm so sorry. There's a bike park w- south west of there 
that's in a small town. I can't remember the name of it. So I'm going up there. Uh, maybe if the weather is, holds out, I will ride there. Uh, I hate that we didn't get to ride up here. I know, we had so, planned on it. Like yeah. we were super excited. In fact, I told the client, because this is how... Because we've been here my, for four days. By the way, yeah. I told the client, I was like, listen, I am going to discount my rates because it's a location that has great mountain biking <laughs> and I hate it. Um, it's Monte San... San Mon- Monsanto. Monsanto. No. Mm-hmm. Are you sure? Monsanto is the company... Monsanto produ- with no T. Monte Sano. I don't know. We're not French. Listen, all I know is Huntsville <laughs> has legit trails. And we yeah, weren't we able to ride them. We can see the mountain where the trails are out the yeah, window right it's crazy. in front of us. You can't. So we, can't. we didn't have a chance to ride them. Uh, if you have a chance or, or you have ridden them, let us know what they're like. I'd be curious. So for us, here's my big question. Is it worth coming back up here for another ride? Well, the, we know the town is worth it. The town is badass. The, Huntsville is incredible. Yeah, they have some awesome eateries. We drank a bunch of beer and walked around in an old school. Elementary like, school. Elementary school. Like Huntsville is legitly, they've they, turned it into like a series of bars and restaurants. It is a very interesting town. It seems like it is poised to be a nice mountain bike town. So I imagine the riding here is pretty good. I would like to know what your thoughts are on it. If you could give us a shout out and tell us if you're up this way, I'd love to have a conversation. I will bring you on to the podcast. We've talked about it. Let's do it. We want to know what it's like up here because we didn't get to experience it. If you will follow us, uh, all you got to do is just hit us up at ride the rebellion on all the channels, except for TikTok. that we were Man, just on, we were on the TikToks. Oh, she's got way. like some ungodly number of fans, by the way. So yeah, like, like, Multiple number thousands. Yes, it's it's quite a number of those, and they were hanging out. And and so if we get a bunch of weird people comment on our shit, about it. <laughs> uh, if you Sell if, out if you haven't uh, uh, subscribed to us before, this is one type of show. Normally we have multiple camera angles, and there's cutting. We do. Uh, uh, we do have a case. pretty stellar lineup of guests on the docket. Yes, Not we did. scheduled, just. We're gonna, we can't even tease them all in full. No, we can't because they're too good. They really are. They like, really are. They're mountain bike. If you didn't, it, it, here's the biggest thing that's the biggest part about this community that's amazing is we started this podcast because we love the community and then the community said, oh, we love you guys. Let's grow together. So Dale and I just kept doing what we we're doing and then you guys kept pushing it. And because you pushed it, suddenly, I want you to understand – Fox took notice. Yep. Fox Factory took notice of this podcast, not because of Dale and I, but because of you. That's a big deal. So for two guys in Southern Alabama where mountain biking should not exist in the way that it does. And single tracks also. Right. Yes. Single tracks. Jeff Barber from Single Tracks figures <laughs> yeah, out. Right. Once that starts happening, that's because of you. And once that starts going, now all of a sudden we have opportunity to grow it. And you're part of that growth. So and we'll please, take you with us. Hell yeah, you know we will. You know what the party so, would be like if we got paid to do this? Uh, all I'm saying is if you guys <laughs> blow us up to Mr. Beast level, oh, man. everybody's going to have product. We'll be like Oprah of mountain biking. You oh, get a bike. I, I you get even, a bike. I couldn't even handle it. Yeah, By the way, everybody uh, look under your chair. we've There's already keys. given away one mountain bike we to have. Jakey Poo. Yes. And that's because of you guys and gals out there. We've mm-hmm. given one. I would like to get money for another one. We need a, what size? Small. We need a small full suspension bike for Justina, our producer that sits over there. J-Mo. She's married to a woman. She's married to a woman. So it'll be a woke says. bike. Be- Careful. Because <laughs> Kid Rock will come shoot it with a machine gun. <laughs> oh, God. We don't want anything blown up. <laughs> We are non-political. We are apolitical. <laughs> we on don't give a fuck. We want we you don't to. Give a fuck. We want you to have a good time in your life. That's right. Point being is like I would love to see if we can figure out. So if anybody has a small bike, full suspension. S- full suspension. I'm not even going to waste your time on a hardtail. I can change the color. She I'm says any color. Dale's going to wrap it in vinyl. I'm going to pee on it because that's the kind of male I am. <laughs> Jesus, R. Kelly. I don't know what happened with that wine or that whiskey. <laughs> it's but a whiskey, dude. It's- <laughs> By the way, I'm drinking straight edge whiskey, which I find super ironic. If and I'm you drinking Topo what, Chico. What the word straight edge means? I'm drinking Topo Chico because I'm a man. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm married to a woman. <laughs> With that said, we're killing the episode just like that because it's time for dinner. Thanks for hanging out. You can follow us on all the social media channels. We at- love you. Ride the rebellion everywhere. All right. And we do love you. Thank you very much. And goodbye. I should have made Justine say goodbye. Never. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, I was going to say, somebody's going to get mad. You're right. And just remember what Dale Boyd says. I'm married to a woman. <laughs> <laughs>